some preachers will tell you there are mansions in heaven god is building i have seen my house in heaven listen they are not building any house in heaven jesus is not building any house in heaven i have seen heaven i have seen my father on his throne that vision is bad dream it's actually malaria dream with all their sins god called them a holy people so what's the meaning of the word holy holy means out of the crowd i pull you out with all your mistakes i pull you out so that separation from the crowd makes you holy when the bible said be you holy even as god is holy what he's saying is be separate like god is separate come out from among them and be ye separate that word separate is the same greek word for holy you are in the world but not of the world why you're separate let me shock you a little bit with principles of bible study can i can i give you a little <laughs> the bible says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man loves the world the love of the father is not in him then he now says friendship with the world is enmity with god a friend of god is an enemy of god then he said go into all the world and preach the gospel <laughs> So God, what do you want? You say, don't be a friend of the world. Then you say, go to the world. How can I go if I'm not their friend? Now, there are two Greek words. There's the word cosmos and there's the word anions. The word cosmos is world. The word anions is world, but they're different. Cosmos means where human beings are gathered. The world, anions, means a way of thinking. So in Bible study, when he says, love not the world, what he's saying is, love not the anions. Their way of thinking. When he says friendship with the world, what he says, friendship with the way of thinking of the world is enmity with God. Then when he says go into all the world, what he says is go into all the cosmos. They are not the same. But you see, if you are not a good student of the Bible, they mean the same to you, you'll be confused. Then you will say the Bible is full of contradictions. There are no contradictions. The contradictions are because you lack interpretation. Okay, let me shock you. Can I shock you a bit more? Can I push some more? Can I push some more? You know, there's a place in the Bible, John chapter 14, actually. He says, he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it are not so, I will have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So, some preachers will tell you, there are mansions in heaven. God is building. There's some people say they died and went to heaven. When they got there, some houses are at foundation. Some houses are at window. Some houses, they are still putting roof. And some people, they have not started building their houses. I'm not afraid of death. I've, I've seen heaven long ago. I been, I've seen heaven, I've seen my father on his throne, I have seen my house in heaven. That vision is bad dream, it's actually malaria dream. Am I teaching tonight? Because, listen, there are no house, they are not building any house in heaven. Jesus is not building any house in heaven. In case my house is close to yours in heaven. There's nothing like that. So can we do some exegesis? Yeah. Now, let me ask you a very simple, intelligent question. With your sweet, smart self, and with your intelligent self, think. Have you ever seen mansions in a house? He said, in my father's house, not houses, house. There are many mansions. Have you seen many mansions inside a house? No. So what Jesus was talking about there has nothing to do with building materials. Because there are no mansions in a house. So what was Jesus really talking about? So that's where Bible interpretation comes. What Jesus was simply saying is that, first of all, let me help you. When he says, when I go, I will prepare a place for you. And when I prepare, I will come back. It's not this coming that we're waiting for. Yeah. It's the other coming that he has come. Right. Yeah. The next coming of Jesus is actually the third coming of Jesus. It's not the second. Right. It's actually the third because Jesus has come two times already. How did he come two times? The first time he was born as the incarnate. That was his first coming. What was the second one? When he rose from the dead, he went to heaven. And when he finished with the father, he came back. That's the second coming. And we're waiting for the third coming. Now watch. I'm teaching here. Am I teaching? So when he said, when I go to my father, I will prepare a place and come. What he was simply saying is, when I rise from the dead, because when he said that in John 14, he had not died. So what he was saying is, when I die and rise, I will go to the regency on high. And I will occupy the place of authority. 
Then when I occupy that place, I will take you to where I am. And I will give you a dwelling place. The place, my father's house and mansions, the Greek word is, there are dwelling places. That is, at the place where I'll be seated, there is space for all of you. So that's why the day you are born again, you are raised up to be seated together with Christ. So right now, you're sitting in your mansion. I don't know if I'm teaching somebody here. Right now, where you are, you are seated where he's seated. Where he is, you are. Who he is, you are. Where he's at, you are. You and him, bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. You cannot be separated. You are in him, he's in you. He cannot fail, you cannot fail. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Now watch, watch. You will understand what I'm saying. Watch that scripture. Colossians 1, 27. Now, he told you that it is now revealed to his saints, 27, to whom the saints, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery which is or among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the mystery that the Old Testament could not understand what that a day will come when Christ will not live in a place called heaven he will live inside you we are man will become the residence of God ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. we are man will carry God didn't Ezekiel prophesy he says in that day I will walk in them I will live in them I will be their God they will be my people didn't he say your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost you are the dwelling place you are the house of God when you move God is moving when you sit god sat down when you talk god is talking am i talking to somebody you know reverend steve from the beginning of time god's desire has always been to live among men the first house they built for god was jacob he woke up and said hey this is the gate of heaven this is the house of god he took oil and put on a stone god couldn't live on a stone after a while moses built a tabernacle god came looked at it and left that house couldn't carry god but god wanted to live among men but no man could carry god so they had to build a house then solomon came solomon built a temple on the day the temple was built when god came into the temple people were collapsing he pulled out then in isaiah he says where is the house that you are building for me where is the house i need a house nobody could build zerubbabel came up built one god looked at it and said too small can't carry me then jesus showed up and said destroy this temple and in three days i will raise it up <laughs> Woo! somebody get him blessed shout i hear i hear jesus said destroy this temple then the jews said you are very stupid do you know how many years it took us to build a temple and you're telling us even three days is not enough to pull it down and then the bible said but they didn't know he was not talking about the physical something has changed something has changed god is no more living in buildings with blocks he has changed his residence i feel like i'm preaching are you understanding so when they killed jesus the temple was destroyed on the third day when he rose the temple was built the temple is not being built it has been built already are you are you watching this so when he rose from the dead he started mass producing himself as many as receive him he gave them power to become the house of god can i preach some more so right now you are the house god is living inside you somebody said but if god is living inside me why do i have malaria because you don't know what you carry it's one thing to have something it's another thing to know so that's why paul prayed that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know that you may know because if you don't know what you carry you can be a pauper in the midst of abundance so the job of teaching and preaching today is to open your eyes so you can know what christ 
has done you are not the needy you are the supplied for you are not the sick you are the healed you're not the bound you're the free you're not the cursed you're the blessed you're not under you're over you're not conquered you're more than a conqueror you're not a minus you're a plus you're not the tail you're the head royal priesthood choosing generation peculiar people called out of darkness into his marvelous life to show the praises of him that has manifested his glory in you somebody shout i'm the one you're talking about you're not a victim you're a victor you're not struggling you're in charge you're not going to possess your possession you have possessed your possession what is your possession christ in you the hope of glory 